What's going on guys? Today we're checking out a bike long awaited by a lot of people. This is the Trek Roscoe 9. Now they are calling it the 2023 model. It's the same as the 2022. They're kind of blending away from the years, model years as they normally did it and kind of going into generational flow just with the supply chain. It's hard to get things out on a regular occasion. So now we are looking at what they call the 2023 Roscoe 9. This would be Gen 1 because it's the first of its series. Great looking bike, color scheme looks great. There is an additional color coming, I have heard, for the 2023 season, different than this one and what had been released some regions. So keep an eye out for that. Overall though, what a bike. Seeing one in person instead of just reading the specs really changes maybe my opinion a little bit on it at first unsure of whether it's worth the price tag you know this is the same price essentially as a fuel ex5 and that is actually a little bit cheaper than this one but this has so much better of a prospect it's kind of ridiculous we're going to do a quick once over on it and tell you about it right now so the 2023 trek roscoe 9 has not changed since 2022 no changes, no anything. So this is gonna be easy for all you people who've seen those ones before. But if you haven't, let's go over why this is such an interesting and impressive bike in Trex lineup. Starting with the classic stuff like tires, everything nowadays from Trek is shipping out with a pair of Bontragers if possible, unless they don't have enough. This one's got those XR4 29 inch, 2.5 inch wide tires. So these are a big, beefy tire setup, gonna perform really well. Bontrager doesn't do a front and rear separate, so you get this nice, fast rolling tire all around and more than enough traction for pretty much everyone anywhere if they were questioning whether that wasn't good enough for them. The wheels they're paired with are the Line 30s, so they're a very lightweight, high contact wheel, especially in the rear. You gotta get lots of control and feel through that. So you'll be able to have that really fast, rapid feel to the engagement of the pedals, essentially. Up front is where it starts some of the more impressive features. The tires are pretty basic, you know, kind of ready to go tubeless ready, but up front, we've got a Fox 36. This is pretty impressive. This is more impressive than what's on the current Fuliex's in the aluminum range altogether, essentially. It's lightweight, it's got 140 mils of travel, it's gonna perform so well, lots of adjustment, the top compression control is firm, you can really get it and set it where you need it. It's gonna be easier on the trail to hit where you need on the fly. Obviously it's air pressurized, so you're able to pump that up for how you need it instead of anyone else and get the most performance out of this fork. Very good fork on this. You're gonna have a lot of performance. Obviously no rear suspension. This is the Roscoe lineup, not the Fuel X. Although this is most, more expensive than the Fuel X5, this is a hardtail bike. So it goes simply straight through that aluminum frame, nice progressive geometry to the drivetrain, which they've paced with another impressive feature, which is the XT drivetrain combination with the SLX. So it is a bit of both. The derailleur is an XT, so you get fast, rapid response times with that. The shifting unit up front is the SLX. So you get a lot of the features from the XT, the texturized grip, but it's not rubberized, the fast response, but it is still a softer feel to it. It's not as snappy and rapid feeling as the true XT, but it's very close, like very, very close. Can't knock it too much. Shifting, gonna be a breeze. You can have no worries about this. And if you really wanted to upgrade the shifter to an XT and you're gonna have a really good part spec, which really isn't that necessary. This does have the 52 tooth chain rings on the back. So you will climb absolutely everything with this. With that, you're able to pair it with a decent sized front chain ring and that's on the E13 crank with built-in washers. So these are actually fixed to the crank itself. So you'll never need to worry about forgetting them if you're ever changing pedals lots and never needing to worry about damage to the cranks from over tightening those pedals on and forgetting the washers. So that is a good, good feature there. Moving on to the brakes. This is another impressive, very impressive feature. I have a Fuel X8 and it does not even have these brake levers. So this has a higher brake lever set and brake part set 
than the Fuel EX8. So we're about $50 more than a Fuel EX5. We've got significantly better front fork, same shifting setup essentially as the Fuel EX8, and better brakes than the Fuel EX8. This is a very well spec bike. Those brakes have a lot of stopping power to you. You're not gonna have any issues in that factor in any which way. You jump over, it's got the standard Bontrager dropper post lever. Basic, works well. It's fairly short throw, so I'm never too angry with it. It doesn't have any texture on the thumb, which would be kind of nice, but it's not critical. I've never slipped off wondering, ah, I can't put the post down, but it's a very basic looking post control lever, but it works well. The post itself is gonna be reliable, doesn't wobble too much. It controls itself very fast release up and then easy but firm to go down. It doesn't feel flimsy or lightweight at all. They do have the Bontrager Line 35 slight raised post on it. So this is gonna give you this nice comfortable control position, especially with how short those stems are getting. You're able to get really good weight over the front wheel and hammer those corners really well. It's gonna be an easy to ride bike. And I think without that rear suspension, you're gonna be able to throw that back end around so nicely that you'll be able to throw and hammer corners really fast, especially even in comparison to a Fuel X which will absorb that. You're just gonna be able to throw it where you want with very little lag in response time. A lower end part spec Fuel EX, for example, would have that delay of how efficient that shock is actually working. The Roscoe 9 is definitely a good looking bike. It's definitely worth it dollar wise for the price, but it is hard to say whether it's worth it to spend more on a hardtail than it would be a full suspension. A lot of people are purchasing full suspensions purely for the comfort of it, purely for the enjoyment of the ride. The Roscoe 9 gets you all the high-end features you probably ever wanted in a bike, but cuts that price from $4,800 now or $5,000 kind of rough price range way down. You're taking $1,500 off it and it makes it a very attainable bike, a very high-powered bike, but are people gonna miss the full suspension? I'm not 100% sure. If you're climbing the ladder up, no. If you're coming from a Trek Marlin or similar hardtail, you are not gonna miss the full suspension. You won't know what you're missing. With a dropper post, you're not needing it as much as you maybe once were because you're on and off the seat more often now than when there were no dropper posts. You really appreciate that full suspension. If you go from a full suspension to this, that's gonna be the tricky one. Should you go Fuel X5 and then Roscoe 9? Such a better part spec, but lack of rear suspension, would you miss it? God, I wish I had an answer for that. I wish I could take this one, but it's the only one we've got, so I can't, to the trails, and actually slam it around and see what it's like. It's gonna be very responsive. It's gonna be very fast. It's gonna be a cool gravelly grinder bike, but easy in the trails. I really think all you're gonna miss is a small amount of comfort. I don't think you'll miss any performance at this price range. And obviously, proven by the rest of the part spec, you're actually getting put better performance out of this than almost up to a Fuel X8, which is a huge price savings. For comfort, could we just put a comfier seat on there? Would you even notice that much? Sudden trails, yes. Most of them, probably not. I like this bike. It's a hell of a bike. I think it's gonna do really well. The hardest part is for them in supply. They are like the slowest arrival bikes. This is the first one we've had since our announcement in 2021 and we're towards the 2022 end of season. So it's gonna still be interesting where this bike goes and are people gonna buy it? It's a trail shredder who slams trails and hits jumps really gonna lean for this over something with suspension in the rear because a racer sure isn't gonna choose this one. They'll still stick with that Excalibur series, which is cheaper than this, and comes with a heck of a part spec as well. A lot of these same features, actually. So it's definitely hard to say what's worth the best value for money. This has a place. This definitely should exist. But is it only for people going from a Trek Marlin or entry-level Roscoe up? Or can this take some people from those entry-level trail bikes with rear suspension? and turn them into shredding trail machines because of the efficiencies you'll get and the controllability you'll have with a bike like this. Maybe one day we'll get to ride it. 
comment trek to try and send me product so I can test these things for real instead of just getting demos and all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try and answer them. It's a great looking bike. If you're worried you might not want this bike, I don't think you have to be. It's well worth it. It is well worth every penny. All right, guys. Good luck. Thanks.